Good evening, everyone. I gotta tell you, I've been waiting two years for this presentation because that's all I've heard. I'm not gonna tell you anything. I'm not gonna show you anything. You have to be surprised like everybody else. So we're gonna look forward to this. Um, I've been instructed to keep it brief, and I will, but not without saying that um, in thinking about Paul's presentation last night, and his final slide showing Father Kaddish and on either side all of the things that he did and all of the things that he was. An educator, a carver, a musician. I got to thinking, hmm, if we had Dennis Brown's picture up there, he'd have an equal number of things on either side. He is many things. He, to me, is a friend. Um, he is... I'm also a pain in my ass, but... Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure y'all could have your own adjectives to put on the side of this picture, too. But most of all, to me, um, Dennis is a creative. He is um, an intelligent thinker. He thinks way beyond what, what most of us would even think of. And as a creative person, as an, as an artist, he challenges us. And as big of a pain that he is, he really does challenge us. He challenges us to think and to think how our art can affect people and what are we trying to say with our art. So, our art. And so I, I can't really say any more except watch and enjoy, and I'll be doing the same. So let's welcome our speaker tonight, our presenter, Dennis Brown. Thank you very much. So a pleasure to be here. I'm going to get straight into the talk, which is based on fluency and flow in calligraphy, music, and life in general. I'm going to start with a tribute to Father Cattage. I've never met the man, it's before my time. So this is my work, a very limited amount when I was a student. And his book inspired me to practice these Trajan letters. But first, let's have a look at the whole column to put it in context. So it documents the Dacian Wars. The, the Romans were victorious in the first century AD. And this is spiraling around from top to bottom. And at the very base is the famous inscription. relatively small compared to the whole thing, yet monumental in more than one way. These letters, now we might be tempted to describe them as typographic. Cattage showed they were calligraphic, a brush written with fluency, which not many people appreciate. They, I'll use the word expediently for describing these letters. This is my reproduction using Trajan Font by Carol Twombly, released by Adobe 1998, I think. And this is how Katish considered it would have looked when on display in ancient Rome. Painted letters made very legible. These days, carvers choose a deep cut for light and shade. Now, a shallow cut is more expedient. So, in fact, every stage was expedient. To make his daily loaf of bread, a sign painter in ancient Rome might have to do, do a job like this every day. So, it was written expediently. Not slowly, 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 but directly, with confidence and without too much planning. So the end of line decision, sometimes the last few letters are squashed together. Uh, towards the bottom, they're actually spaced wider. So it doesn't look like it was too carefully planned out. Yeah, the Trajan font became widely used by designers after its release. The tragic, the tragic thing about it is it's become a cliché. 
So designers paid their $40 for a license to use it, but then they realized so did everybody else. It's one of the reasons I don't like the idea of designing type fonts. One minute you're a hero, next minute you're a cliché. Hollywood film titles still use this font almost all the time. But it is based on the Trajan inscription. So I did this when I was 19 years old in college, being taught the English style of calligraphy. I practiced this just from Katic's book, which is not quite a how to do it. These letters were written expediently. I understood the energy that comes from that, while other students practice very slowly. I was a teenage, but there were students of all ages studying calligraphy <clears throat> full time in London. And one lady, elder lady, was painting the letters with a pointed brush, basically drawing and filling in. I'd finished four of these whole panels in the time she took to finish three letters. <laughs> It's not about the speed of finishing things, of course. In the professional era, it's uh, the money you make. If you, go, if you take a week to do this, you, you can't make a living. You also get this benefit of energy in the writing. Now, these letters were not practical for me to use. They're too big. But this is just to give my sense of Katic's fluency, which not everybody appreciates. Um, that such typographic letters, as we might describe them now, were fluently written. So there's Father Katic on the right. Notice the brush hold. Um, this is one of the three methods he described, and it's one he apparently preferred for very large demonstrations. The illustration at, at the left shows the brush hold, arm's length almost, holding at the tip, quite fluent for making a, a long vertical stroke. He acknowledged using a mal stick as method two, and also resting the hand on the stone. So three possibilities. Now that's the cover of the origin of the serif. The green letter is brush written without retouching. The orange suggests, well, it is a retouched version. And Catfish suggested the carver would do that, you know, without planning. Smoothing out the serifs and maybe balancing the weights a little better. The bowl on the R and the diagonal are slightly improved in their weighting. Perhaps the suggestion is the carver would do that on the fly. Now here is one of Katic's exercises, which shows more obviously the fluency. It shows changes of brush angle. So Johnson specified a consistency of stroke thickness by holding, in his case, a broad edge pen at a fixed pen angle. So all the downstrokes would be the same thickness, for example. Now here, the downstrokes are still consistent, but the direction of the upstrokes, the thin strokes, varies greatly. So for the very first stroke, you can see the brush angle is very steep, but then at the top, before it comes down, it has to change back to the angle for the consistent downstrokes. So Katic's philosophy differed in not holding the brush at a constant angle, but varying it, allowing thin strokes to be any direction. But you can see the energy in the strokes there as well. So acceleration at the base of strokes, faster up, slower down. Now, I'm not really going to show too much traditional calligraphy here, but just to get into this idea of ink flow. And these are strokes that get an energy from being written fast. Not rushed, pauses in between, 
but uh, that's my way. Now, I've noticed in classes, students have struggles with the ink, with the paper. They have struggles with the teacher sometimes. Um, and everything's difficult. So then maybe they dip their brush into water and they might not even notice the natural flow, fluency. So this is from one of my first videos a long time ago, but you can see the patterns and the flow. And if calligraphy could be that easy, uh, it just happens by itself. Um, so this is a print from some years ago, and I'm going to show you a new movie using this idea of abstract calligraphy. So some people said at this time, you can't have calligraphy without letters, but actually letters are abstract. Language is abstract. This is ink. It's concrete. It's at least a photograph and a print of ink. And at least metaphorically, you could say it's calligraphic. Just appreciate the qualities we like in calligraphy. Thick and thin contrast, fluent lines, and uh, a beautiful calligraphic composition.